Hey, what's up? This is Dilio coming to you live with another video on the Dilio T2K YouTube channel. I wanted to do a quick review. I know I'm a year behind, but I thought I'd still do a review on the video because I wanted to give my perspective on this plugin and just break down what I like, what I don't like about it, and just kind of give you some information about this. And of course, I'm partial to Dilly Base, designed by yours truly. Like I went through the process of designing and building all that but this is probably what dilly base 2.0 would be because it has a lot of features in there but there are some features that i'm missing and of course what plugin am i talking about it's called sublab i didn't even tell you what the name of the plugin was so sublab is a 808 sub bass plugin that you can play and it has a lot of great features to give you that character to give you that distorted 808 bass and all that stuff so the first thing we're going to do is kind of play a little bit of notes for you And obviously it goes without saying that you might want to use your earbuds to listen to this or a stereo system with some subs because it's all about the bass in this video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different blocks. We got the sound block, master block, distortion block, and compressor block. And what this does is that it combines different things together to give you that 808 sound. So you have three pretty much sound generators here. You have an analog synthesizer that gives you different waveforms. You have a sampler that gives you sort of a kick sound and then you have this psychoacoustic pure sine oscillator right here that only does sine waves but it stays in the pocket for subs so it will never play a high note so if you're going up in a scale see how it starts over again at the bottom c so that's never a high c there so let's let's separate the different elements. So I'm going to bring up one of the first presets that I heard on here. And let's break it down. So right here in the middle here, we have the mixer and I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to move my picture probably right over here so you can see what's going on. There we go. So if, if I click on any of these blocks, we got the mixer right there. This is just a synthesizer. So it's got a little bit of a kick thing. And then inside of the synthesizer part, you have your volume envelope, you have your filter envelope, and you have your pitch envelope. So if I increase that decay, you can change the pitch of that. You can change the octave of it. On the volume envelope, you can change how long it releases. And one thing to pay attention to is that this volume envelope dictates how long the sampler plays a loop for or the X sub. So if I bring the X sub in and I let that release go for a long time. All right, it'll it'll release that. So that's that's something I think I would have liked to have been changed is that I would like there to be a volume oscillator for each uh, oscillating or each sound develop sound generating element into the plugin. All right, so on this part we have the sampler, so let's fill out the sampler. Got a little bit of kick there. You can change the filter. So the sampler, you got the 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 waveform that you can drag in. You can drag in your own samples. Uh, you can, and the cool thing is, is that it has an algorithm inside of it that will detect the pitch of the sample and match it. So wherever note you're playing it in the song or on your keys, it'll match that key. So we have a kick here. If I bring that, that original, now we're mixing, giving you that sound. If I want to take away that synthesizer element just that by itself so you can um, make some edits like change the name things of that nature but for the most part and you have all kinds of different samples there and I'm hearing it distorted in my headphones but I really love the low end on here I may have to reinstall this because I think I just accidentally deleted the sample that's something to watch out for. So try not to move so quick on this thing. You make a little accident. And 
And the cool thing about the sampler is that you get to play right into the waveform there and loop it. And you have crossfading, so that helps you get rid of clicks and artifacts that you would get inside of a waveform there. So if I want to X, X sub, this kind of adds some harmonics there. So if I bring that in. Notice how that that when I go up in the scale, that that low X sub goes back down. And I really like that. That kind of I don't know. That kind of surprises to me when I first heard. It. I was like, wait a minute. OK, so this part of the, the, the plugin wants to stay inside of the sub range of course we mute out this and we're going to go talk about the x sub because obviously you got the root notes that you can change you can change the start of the sample you can change where it loops you can make it fade in fade out you can fine tune it to change the pitch add some decay i'm sorry add a delay so you can delay that sample triggering when you hit the note for some character and you can also add high and low cuts, a little bit of EQ on there. And also you have a filter here as well. So if you want to uh, filter out some of that sound, you can. And this also affects the, and right here, because this is green, this is the synth. So you can add a filter on the synthesizer side. You can also add a filter on the sampler side, which I think is pretty cool. And I see that you can't add a filter to this. Of course, why would you want to filter out a perfect sine wave? I don't know. Not necessarily something you want to do. And obviously, to the right, you see a readout what's going on here. If I want to take out the harmonics, nothing there. Now you have to listen closely, but hear those overtones. And those are some, and what, what, what I like about that is that those notes are were easily heard on smaller speakers and the interesting thing i like about that is when you play a bass guitar the reason that bass guitar is so good is that there are harmonics on the bass string so not only are you hearing the main fundamental note you're hearing resonant frequencies that are above and makes it a very palatable thing for a lot of speaker systems from big stereo systems down to the littlest of earbuds so that you can still hear that note and get a cue in your mind okay that's the bass guitar right there so in this instance because a sine wave is a very pure sound i like that they brought back and put back things that may go missing from a perfect waveform i think that's really cool of course you can mix that with the uh sampler Got distortion too let's talk about distortion you can add it to the mixer or you can add it to the synthesizer and you can also add it to the sampler you got dark drive overdrive Which is cool. You can add different. I'm not really a fan of the grunge. We can smooth it out with that filter. There's a lot of overtones in it. You can also create a lot of overtones from. Uh, from adding distortion there. You also have a compressor there to kind of smooth out the sound. Makes it breathe a little bit. And if you want to add a little bit of a, a widening block here, uh, it can widen the sound while leaving the bass in mono, which is good, keeps it efficient. So you hear the note coming up on a scale, but then when I go up to that high C, we're back down on low C. Hmm. And 
and it's, it's really fun to to mess with that and then also what you also have is a sampler which is good so if you want to take the kick drum sounds that you make in here and export them to any program you want you can you can you can do it all you gotta do is just hit sample and say it's waiting like a tape recorder you hit a note it's going to wait for it to finish decaying. Once it finishes decaying, you can click and drag this file wherever you want to go. If you don't want it, hit X. You can start over again, which is a really useful thing. And I can harken back to <laughs> the good old days when I first started designing 808s myself. Uh, I used this program called Stomper back on Windows. Oh, my gosh. XP, was it? Yeah, like Windows XP. There's this program called Stomper uh, made by like the Swiss software designer and that's how i learned about using envelopes there and how to shape sounds and to deal with oscillators and make them pitch up pitch down uh it's a really cool really cool piece of software right here so this is like that on steroids so i definitely recommend this if you're interested in designing your own 808 sounds and also another thing that i like pitch band got slides right there so you can make a slide you can change how it slides you can tune it you can change the time it takes to slide from one note to another so if I if I change the the time to like a quarter here it slows down a little bit if I change to a half note Make it slide that way. So there's all kinds of ways to manipulate the notes the way you want to. I think it's a pretty cool program. And I know I'm a year late, but better late than never, right? So if you like this type of content, let me know in the description below. Let me know if you see this video. <laughs> and if not, um, that's all good. We're going to keep this thing moving. I'm Dilio. You're watching the Dilio TTK YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Tell you on the track.